And next up are these Z idlers, and you should have two different sides on these. Okay, I've got all the parts laid out here. You're also going to need these accent parts if you print them in an accent color anyway. And these are what are going to be holding the idlers, and it's going to fit together something like that. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and insert this uh, M3 nut in here. And then once I've got that in, then I'm going to take my M316. I'm going to drop it in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. So I'm just holding that nut with my finger and then just screwing that in. And I can feel it drawing it in. And once you feel it get snug, that should be all you need to do. This finger tight's good. Okay, now we're going to need the M5 by 30 screws and the 9mm GT220 um, pulley here. Okay, um, these can go either way, it doesn't really matter the orientation. But the screw head should be on the right hand side as you're looking at the kind of the eyes here. So that's pretty much all you're going to do there. When you're doing these idlers, you're going to know, probably notice that there is a little bit of play between them. So you're not going to need any shims or washers though. And that's because uh, they are self-aligning. So if you notice that you're, you've got a little bit of play in there, that should be all right. So now I've got all four of them done. And that's what mine look like. So now I'm ready to go ahead and mount them. You're going to take this piece and insert it kind of to the side. So the eyes are going to be looking kind of at each other. Um, and then you're going to need two M530s and some T-nuts there. And now I've went ahead and got that one installed. And make sure you snug it all the way up to the corner. All right, so at this point, I've got them all four installed. And they're looking pretty good, nice and tight. Okay, next up, I'm going to be doing these front idlers, and you're going to need your shims, your bearings, uh, these parts here. They're eventually going to fit together like this, and that'll go on there with the bearing stack in here. You're also going to need uh, all the screws. You're going to need a couple of heat inserts that we're going to be putting um, into these parts here. And I'm going to start off with the heat inserts on these smaller parts. I'll just go ahead and place those in. Make sure you have the right side. There's holes on both sides. You want the bigger hole. And it's kind of got a tapered part here. And while I've got the, higher, the soldering iron still on, I'm going to go ahead and insert these. It may help to stack them together so you don't have a wobble when you're putting them on. And don't forget to place your M5 nuts here at the, in the bottoms of these. Now I'm going to attempt to load the bearings onto the M5. This is going to be a little tricky. You're going to need your M5 40 screw and then this is eventually going to go all the way through here so I'm going to try and feed it in and you need to do a, a washer and then you're going to do a bearing make sure you get them the correct way so you want to do the wide part on the bottom I'm just kind of working it through there you can see the progress so far and then we need the other bearing which is going to be the now I've got one more, you can see I've got it pretty much all the way in there. Now I just need to be able to get one more washer on top. Okay, yeah, I just kind of jiggled it around, got it through. It wasn't too hard. So there you can see I've got a washer, two bearings, and a washer on top. And then after you get all that done, you can go ahead and thread it into this. Now don't make it too tight yet because we still got to kind of get it lined up. Just get it in there so it's not going to come out. To finish this piece off, you're going to need an M340 screw socket head, and you're also going to need an M3 washer. And then you'll just go ahead and put that washer there right under the head. So you can kind of move it forward or backwards. All right, now, <clears throat> now what I'm going to do next I don't think it matters for now really where the position of this is, but um, that'll be done later. So then I'm just going to repeat the process for the next piece. Okay, I've got these both pretty much how I think they're supposed to go. <laughs> Looking pretty good. 
and those are going to be ready to install. They're going to go on the very front of the machine. And both these drives are the same. So on the, on the B drive, you're going to go the same side as the recesses for the M3s. You're going to put the M530s in, then you're going to do shim, bearing, bearing, shim, shim, bearing, bearing, shim. Same thing on the small stack. It's a as the other one, so it's a shim, bearing, bearing, shim. And then once you get that done, you can set this piece on top, kind of position it, because you're not going to be able to drop it in, because they're thread. you got to thread these. So once it's all set in, flip it over. Make sure you're, you don't lose anything, particularly the shims. And then you're just going to tighten them down. And if you have any, any of your screws are poking through a little bit, then you might want to, like this one's fine, but this one is poking through a tiny bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shave that one down a little bit. I'll just show how I do it. So I take that out, and then I just kind of take the end of the screw and go like that. And you can see on the end of mine, it's uh, a little bit smoother now. And actually, this one doesn't even matter. It's not going to be hitting the motor like the other one is. So this is the one you got to really be careful of. So you don't want that hitting the motor. And it's not going to. Yeah, that one's flush now. This one, that one feels pretty good. Yeah, there's really nothing protruding, so I think I'm fine there. The difference with this motor is that you're going to align with the bottom screw. And your, your flange is going to be down here, and, and you're going to put your set screw on the top. Which is opposite of how we did it before. So I've already went ahead and loctited that in. Just like the last one, and you can see this is aligned with that pretty well. So now I can go ahead and sink my M3 screws in there. The best way to look at it is with from the front with the little Voron logo, and you want the wires coming out this side. Now for the A drive, <clears throat> you're going to have your set screw on the bottom here, most likely. And it is going to need to line up um, so you got your three M3 motor screws here. When you put all this together, this is going to need to line up with this top bearing here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to eyeball that and loctite it up. And to line that up, I recommend just holding it in place and then kind of just looking at it. Like I've got it lined up pretty well right there. And then I'm just going to gently pull this out without bumping it. And now I've got my position, and I can go ahead and Loctite this on there. Okay, so I've got those Loctite into place now. You kind of see how they're aligned on mine. And you will have a chance later, it's just easier to do it, but you should still have access from either side. The other thing, before you sync these, make sure that you have the wires aligned properly. This is how the A-drive wire should look, coming out this side. Now I can go ahead and sync those M3 screws. Before you sink the screws, make sure your uh, your M5 screws aren't protruding too much because those could scratch up the motor. It's probably not a huge deal, but I noticed mine were coming out a little bit more than I wanted them to. So I'm going to just loosen those up just a tiny bit. You could also sand them down if you wanted to. But you don't want to over tighten those. I'm just come back and double check, make sure everything still looks nice and lined up, which it does. Okay, so that A drive is now done. One thing you want to check, make sure there's no gaps, especially right here below this bearing. If there is, your screw might be a little too long, and mine was. Um, and I went ahead and took a little hand sander here, sander, and then I just uh, kind of grinded off the very edge of the screw. It had a little bit of slop on the end. So once I did that, I was able to have no gap after putting these M3 screws in. So that's, that's just a tip if you're running into problems. And that's pretty much it for the AB drives.